What's up, everybody? So let's talk about Cassie and Diddy. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Cassie done put out some very, very strong allegations against Diddy. Carisha, girl, come get your man. Come get your man, Carisha, because Cassie is over here literally saying that Diddy graped her and abused her for years. Now, we all can say that when they were together, she looked unhappy. She looked unhappy for years. And she was with him for a very long time. But see, girl, you should have left him uh, a year, mm, four or five when he didn't propose to you and put a ring on your finger. That's when you should have left. But, you know, we understand that when you're in love, you stay and you endure that struggle love. Even though he has money, he exhibits that struggle love. Now, was he giving her money? Yeah, he yeah, yeah, he was. But was he making her happy? No, he was not. That was struggle love to me. That struggle love to me. So, y'all, let's get into this article from page six. The title says, Sean Diddy Combs accused of great decades long abuse by ex Cassie in disturbing lawsuit. Cassie filed a lawsuit against ex Diddy accusing the hip hop mogul of grape and repeated physical abuse throughout their relationship. According to court docs, which I have some, and I will put it at the end of this article, obtained by page six, the Me and You singer born Cassandra Ventura claimed that after she met the Revolt CEO in 2005 when she was only 19, he allegedly began a pattern of abuse and control that included allegedly forcing her to have sex with male prostitutes while he filmed, physically abusing her and supplying her with drugs. And y'all, she did look unhappy. I'm not going to lie to you. Cassie also alleged in the suit that Diddy, born Sean Combs, allegedly forced his way into her home and graped her toward the end of their long-time relationship in 2018. Girl, I'm so glad you got away from that, honey. The Long Way to Go singer 37 claimed in the lawsuit that Diddy, 54, was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat Miss Ventura savagely. The Me and You singer claims the Bad Boy Records founder allegedly forced himself into her home in 2018 and graped her. She claimed that those beatings were often witnessed by his staff and employees. However, no one dared to speak up against their fright and ferocious boss. Cassie alleged that the Gotta Move On rapper allegedly forced her to carry his firearm in her purse to remind her of his ability to cause serious harm. Over the years that Mr. Combs abused Miss Ventura physically and sexually, she again and again tried to escape his tight hold over her life, the lawsuit stated. Every time she hid Mr. Combs' vast network of corporations and affiliated entities found her and those who worked for Mr. Combs' companies implored her to return to him. Woo! Diddy's attorney denied the claims in a statement to page six. In September 2018, Cassie claimed in the suit that she joined the Sean John founder for dinner for what she believed would be a discussion about concluding their relationship for good. However, she claimed that once they returned to her home, which Diddy paid for, he allegedly forced himself into her apartment and tried to kiss her. She told him to stop and attempted to push him away. The lawsuit read, Mr. Combe then forcibly pulled off Miss Ventura's clothing and unbuckled his Built. He proceeded to grape Miss Ventura while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Cassie and Diddy dated on and off for 10 years while calling it off for good in 2018. Page Six has reached out to a rep for Cassie but did not immediately hear back. After years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and speak up 
on ha on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationship and people are going to be saying girl why you waited to now to just now speak out and i really don't care if it's then or now girl if you was abused honey let these people know how this man is did his attorney ben barfman denied the accusations in a statement to page six claiming that cassie had been demanding money from the bad boy records founder girl cassie tied the knot with fitness trainer alex fine in 2019 mr combs vehemently denies their offensive and outrageous allegations the lawyer said for the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Ooh. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies aiming to tarnish Mr. Cone's reputation and seeking a payday. Ooh, girl, they saying that you lying, Cassie, about Diddy abusing you, even though, girl, it was all, written all over your face how unhappy you was when you was with Diddy. But I'm just saying, we all saw that. However, Cassie's lawyer, Douglas Wigdor, told the New York Times that his clients and Diddy spoke before she filed the lawsuit and the last night musician allegedly offered her money to remain silent. Mr. Combs offered Ms. Ventura eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of this lawsuit, Wigdor said. She rejected his efforts. Mm, now those are some strong, strong allegations that Cassie is throwing out there. And girl, now if this is true, ooh, honey, Diddy, you, you, ooh. And listen, y'all, I don't know, and we don't know what be going on behind closed doors. So I'm not going to sit up and say, well, I don't think he hit. I don't know. I don't put nothing past nobody. I mean, absolutely nobody. So I'm not going to be on nobody's side and say, well, um, she lying or um, I don't think he did. I'm not. I don't put nothing behind these holly weird folks at all at all but anyway guys let's get into these court docs now this is not all of it but it's some of it i got this from gossip of the city so let's read these court docs she endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands for Miss Ventura, the dark times were those she spent trapped by Mr. Combs in a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking, among other violent and unlawful acts. Mr. Combs raped Miss Ventura in her own home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on Miss Ventura, resulting in bruises, bu busted lips, black eyes, and bleeding blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in Miss Ventura, For, forced Miss Ventura to engage in sex acts with male sex workers while filling on himself and filming the encounters, ran out of his apartment with a pow pow in pursuit of a rival industry executive whom he learned was nearby demanded that miss ventura to carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is and introduce miss ventura to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse require her to procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions throughout their relationship mr combs was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat miss ventura savagely these beatings were witnessed by mr combs staff and employees of bad boy entertainment and mr combs related businesses but no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss 
Following these episodes of horrific abuse, Mr. Combs would immediately attempt to hide Ms. Ventura and the evidence of his violent rage. He often showered her with gifts following incidents of physical violence and typical pattern of behavior by serial abusers. In addition to the physical assaults, Mr. Combs frequently reminded Ms. Ventura of his ability to cause serious harm, whether by requiring her to carry his gun in her purse or by blowing up the car of a magician that was romantically interested in Ms. Ventura. Adding insult to injury, Mr. Combs used illegal substances and threats of violence to force Ms. Ventura into repeated unwanted sexual encounters with male sex workers. Over the years that Mr. Combs abused Ms. Ventura physically and sexually, she again and again tried to escape his tight hold over her life. Every time she hid, Mr. Combs' vast network of corporations and affiliated entities found her and those who worked for Mr. Combs' companies employed to her to return to him. Many went as far as to explicitly state that her failure to return to Mr. Combs would hinder her success in the entertainment industry. When she believed that she had finally separated from her longtime abuser, she joined Mr. Combs for a dinner, after which he forced her into her home and graped her while he she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. Mr. Combs also became deeply involved in Ms. Ventura's personal life with his personal staffing attending to Ms. Ventura's day-to-day -day travel and other needs, including medical care. On multiple occasions, Mr. Combs had Ms. Ventura's personal medical records sent directly to his email address. For instance, when Ms. Ventura began experiencing memory loss, potentially due to excessive drug use and or head injuries caused by Mr. Cone's beatings. As described below, her MRI results were provided directly to Mr. Combs. Mr. Combs also repeatedly arranged for his staff to drive Ms. Ventura to certain doctor's appointments. In this way, Mr. Combs exerted ownership over Ms. Ventura as Another example of the ways in which he manipulated Ms. Ventura and, and ensured obedience early on in their relationship, he asked Ms. Ventura what she called her grandfather. When Ms. Ventura said that she refer, referred to her grandfather as Pop Pop, Mr. Combs perversely insisted that Ms. Ventura refer to him with that nickname. Ms. Ventura was also exposed in the intense violence that pervaded Mr. Combs' rise to fame. For example, on one occasion when Mr. Combs and Ms. Ventura were using drugs together in his home, one of his security staff barged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Combs, was spotted at Mills Drive-In Diner in Los Angeles. Mr. Combs began to get dressed, retrieved multiple guns from a safe, and ran out of his home to where he believed Mr. Knight was dining. Ms. Ventura became terrified and began to cry. In January 2009, after Mr. Combs learned that Ms. Ventura spoke to another music manager at a party in Los Angeles, he became enraged. She had hoped speaking to this manager would allow her to further grow her career and that Mr. Combs would be happy for her, but instead he became extremely angry and pulled her out of the club where the party was taking place. In the car leaving the club, Mr. Combs beat Miss Ventura, pushing her into a corner of the vehicle and stumping on her face. Mr. Combs security staff Roger Buns tried to stop the beating but was unable to de-escalate the situation. When the car arrived at Mr. Combs residence, Miss Ventura attempted to run away but Mr. Combs followed her and proceeded to again kick her in the face. Miss Ventura was bleeding profusely and was ushered into Mr. Combs' home where she began to throw up from the violence assault. Mr. Combs always supplied Miss Ventura and the Zex workers with copious amounts of drug before and during the FOs. Miss Ventura was given ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts during FOs, which f allowed her to dissociate during those horrific encounters. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after an FO to 
recover from excessive substances pushed upon her. While Miss Ventura quickly deleted any photographs or video of Zex's acts if they were taken on her phone, Mr. Combs repeatedly made clear that he retained many videos of Miss Ventura than F during FOs. Even when she deleted the videos, Mr. Combs would tell Miss Ventura that he was able to recover deleted videos from her devices. On one occasion, he sat near her on a flight and made her watch a video she thought she had deleted, reinforcing her inability to escape and in the immense power he had over her. Mr. Combs would pay the male Zex workers a few thousand dollars in cash for their services. During some FOs, Mr. Combs would become extremely intoxicated and would hit Ms. Mature in front of the male Zex workers. Miss Ventura was repulsed by Mr. Combs' demands, but between the physical beating and recognizing his incredible power and incredible temper, Miss Ventura became petrified of her partner and boss and felt that she could not say no. Frequently, her anxiety before an FO would become so great that she would become physically ill, sometimes to the point of vomiting while kneeling over the toilet. Mr. Combs would shame her into performing for him, eventually forcing her to get up and proceed with the encounter. She knew firsthand that telling Mr. Combs that she did not want to engage in FOs was met with were met with anger and violence. In addition, any suggestion that Miss Ventura would refuse the FO or otherwise report Mr. Combs' abuse was met with ultimatums by Mr. Combs, who would say that Miss Ventura could not go to the police because she had a lot to lose. In February 2012, during Paris Fashion Week, Mr. Combs told Miss Ventura that he was going to blow up Miss Kid Cudi's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. And let's just say Kid Cudi confirmed what Cassie was saying to be true. Around that time, Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. Now, Kid Cudi did come out and agreed with Cassie and said that Diddy did indeed do what he did. Okay. Okay. In 2015, Ms. Ventura spoke to a popular music manager at an after party in a hotel suite in Las Vegas. Mr. Combs saw her speaking to this manager and sternly told her to step into the bedroom adjourning the suite. In the bedroom, Mr. Combs beat Ms. Ventura severely. She ran from corner to corner of the room trying to avoid Mr. Combs beating and kicking. When she tried to lock herself in the bathroom, he pushed through and punched her and kicked her while she curled up under the toilet. Her screams were drowned out by loud music playing in the outside area of the hotel suite. When Mr. Combs, this head of security and, and assistant, saw Miss Mature after her assault, they began to cry. Miss Mature had two black eyes, a busted and bruised lip, and a huge welt on her forehead. Now, that's all that was in the um the court documents that was on gossip of the city and oh child if these are true honey this is a whole hot mess honey girl carisha what what's your man carisha what your man's got going on over there honey and listen I'm not going to lie to you, it's, it was a couple of times when Diddy and Cassie took pictures together and she did not look happy at all. And we don't never know what be going on behind these closed doors. She, he has money, he has power, and she came off as a weak individual. And that's probably how he got away with what he did to her. And that's some crazy-ish that is some crazy, crazy allegations right there. I'm not going to lie to y'all. So, what I got to say about this whole situation, y'all know what I got to do. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Share this video. Like this video. And y'all know what I got to do. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye.